This is Dr. Dennis L. Water Sr., the podcaster, the minister, the psychologist, the individual who has taken all of the courses related to the PhD in industrial organizational psychology uh, in regard to executive coaching and executive leadership development. Uh, I've done that over the course of my life and I am here now doing this podcast and the podcast really on this, uh, the last day of uh, the, actually let's call it the first day of the rest of your life. It's uh, January the 20th, uh, 2021, January the 20th, 2021. And it's about 11 o'clock here on the East Coast of the United States of America, on the East Coast, as we call it. And the reason why I'm taking the time to actually record this uh, at this particular time is that I'm seeking, uh, by the grace of God, to articulate exactly what it is that we are seeking to do, what we're seeking to bring about. And initially, I'm working with a service that is called Patreon, I believe it is, uh, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com, where individuals are working to bring forth various communities, various communities. And that's in a great respect what I'm seeking to do and what others are seeking to do. Uh, This particular community is uh, really built on a number of educative experiences that I have had in my life and also a number of spiritual experiences that I've had in my life. And the best way that I can explain that is really to look and to see what happened in America today that had to do with the peaceful transfer of executive power or presidential power um, in this country today. And what I saw were dreams that came true, dreams that came true. One of those dreams had to do with a individual who was born, as I understood it, into a home in which there were, I believe it was 12 children, born into a home in which there were 12 children. And I believe this person, um, he is now a senator, um, uh, Mr. John Warnock, I believe is the pronunciation of his name. Um, he is from Georgia. He was recently elected um, in a presidential or senatorial election that took place on January the 5th, I believe it was. And he has become a senator. That's a dream come true, a dream come true when I think about it. Actually, it's an amazing journey. Uh, for someone who is in a family that large and to dream that big and then to have that actually come true. The other dream that is there, that, of course, that of the president, uh, the president now, Joe Biden, and you look at this career that he's had, better yet, the life that he's had and what is involved with that in regard to that, the ups, the downs, the all-arounds that he's had in the course of his life, and for him just to keep on keeping on, uh, that's an amazing journey. That's a heroic journey that he's had, and that, again, is a dream come true. And then the person who also, uh, when I look at it, for me, in regard to, again, this is Dennis L. Waters Sr., in regard to my own personal life, there are two individuals that actually went to schools that I have already attended in my life. One is uh, uh, Senator John Warnock, um, is his name, I believe, again, and then also Vice President Kamala Harris. John Warnock went to, um, what was John Warnock is, let me change it, let me change it, let me change it, let me change it. John Warnock went to Morehouse. I went to a school called um, Howard University. 
Howard University. I went to Howard University School of Divinity. John Warnock went to Morehouse, if I understood that correctly, and he was a, it's what we consider to be an HBCU, Historically Black College University. The other person I was mentioning in regard to having gone to a school I went to is actually the, um, the chaplain of the Senate. His name is Barry Black. Um, uh, Captain uh, Commander Barry Black. He is the chaplain of the Senate. He went to a school that I went to, which is called Oakwood University now. And so that whole piece in regard to that. But the person that I actually went to a school, they went to a school the same as I did and graduated, is the person who is the now the vice president, Kamala Harris. Uh, she is a graduate of Howard University, and I'm also a graduate of Howard University School of Divinity. And so all of those things is what I'm talking about when I speak of a dream come true, because my dream was really to actually go to school. I was the first of my parents' children to graduate from high school. I had four older sisters who did not graduate for various reasons, and I became the first of their children to actually graduate from school. That was a dream come true, but I didn't stop there. I just kept going, not just graduate from high school, but graduate from college on a number of levels. And now I've seen people also over the course of time arrive at the point where they have dreams that seem almost impossible to come true. However, what has taken place in America and in the world is individuals have kept dreaming. And there's actually a process by which a person can keep dreaming. A person can keep acting in harmony and seeing in harmony with that dream. And there was a young lady who was there today, and she did a poem. She was 22 years old, and she did a poem. And at the end of the poem, she made a statement that was so powerful that also goes in line with what I am saying in regard to all that we're teaching about a community of people. And she said, there is always light. This is the synopsis of what she said. There's always light. If you have the courage to see it, then you can be it. There's always light. Now, if you will see it, and, and the word is always, not sometimes, always light. And that goes in line with what we've been talking about when we speak of this aspect of taking 100% of responsibility for one's life. In the darkest day of a person's life, there's always light. In the darkest day. In my original book, my first book, uh, that was actually the uh, first book at Howard, the book that came out of my dissertation at Howard, which was called I Will Restore. It was a ministry of healing to African-American males who had been impacted by physical sexual abuse prior to the age of puberty. And when a person looks at that, there's this whole darkness that comes about as a result of uh, this, this traumatic experience. And a person can sink to the point where they feel that they are a victim in regard to light. But remember, the young lady said, there's always light. If you have the courage to see it, then you can be it. And that's where we come up with this idea of blame no want. And we take that from the aspect that there's this possibility, this possibility, this possibility that there's a conscious you that you may not have been in contact with, a conscious you that you may not have been in contact with. And this conscious you existed before you were formed in the womb. Is that conscious you that we want to awaken in the same way that this conscious you was awakened in the person of Jeremiah when God in the book of Jeremiah spoke to this consciousness, this Jeremiah consciousness when he said to Jeremiah, before I form you in the womb. So there's a you that is Jeremiah, just like there's a you, that's you, before you were formed in the womb. Think about that. That there is something about you that has never known the experience of this earth, that has never been hurt, that has never been abused. Not only that, this conscious you that God knows has never had the experiences. As a matter of fact, you can think of this conscious you as that light. 
that's in God, that lives in this kingdom of heaven, this consciousness of heaven, this consciousness of the omnipresence and the omniscience and the omniactive and the omnipotency of God, that is God, that lives in this land, that exists in this land, that is in this land, that is indeed in the midst and in the heart of the I am, and is indeed the I am that I am. And that consciousness was the consciousness that Jeremiah was reminded of when God said, Before I form you in the womb, like God is saying to you now, before I form you in the womb, I knew you. What God is awakening within the individual is this call to be, to be, because if you can see it, which means if you can understand it, if you can comprehend it, if you can be aware of this consciousness, then you can be it. And in the darkest day, when the dream seems so far away and impossible, you can be it and be the seed, the germ, the DNA, the germinating, the alpha to what will be the omega, the seed to what will be the fruit. And when nobody else sees it, you can begin to sprout and be it and thereby germinate the energy that attracts others to it. And that's what we're talking about in regard to this community that's being created. Because sometimes when individuals don't see it and don't feel it, They actually treat you in a particular kind of way and sometimes will cast you out and send you away because you are different from. Or they will shut you down and demand that you conform to whoever they are. And I speak out of the experience of living And so it is as a result of that, that there has been this call that has been on my life that has kept pulling me forward to the vision. I'm being pulled forward to it, and I am being pulled by it to it. And so this whole aspect is to actually have individuals who are growing in consciousness, growing in consciousness. And I would say to any individual, what I'm talking about is found, is in the Bible, there's no question about it. No question about it. There are texts in the Bible that say various things. As a man think it, though, as a woman think it, so is she, so is he. That's what it says. It's the same thing is that Uh, there's always light. And if you see it, you can be it as a person thinks. See, thinking, consciousness is reality. What you see, you be. I actually wrote that a few weeks ago, I believe, on Facebook. is there, what you see, you be. And so this whole aspect in regard to this is that uh, the... People who see speak early. They are called by a fellow named Simon Sinek, I believe his name is, S-I-N-E-K, the early adopters. They're the ones that see ahead. They have always seen something before it came to be. And so we are dealing with principles and not necessarily practices because the only way that you practice these things is that they're in your mind and they keep flashing through and sometimes they're only momentarily in your mind. But Emerson will tell you those moments are what we live for. Moments. When there's a divine word or divine vision that comes through in those moments. You see that in those moments, you be that. 
And so this is what we're working with in regard to this. This is what is taking place in regard to all of this. And so it is a day of inspiration. It is a day. Think about this for a moment. We'll come right back. Think about this and the way that it goes and how it moves, the tempo of it, is how it's moving forward in the light. that an individual arrives at the point where they begin to understand how this is really taking place in the life. And that's what we're seeking to actually bring to pass and help individuals, each person, you, me, all of us, to understand together. And what we're doing is that we're talking about individuals who have actually done it in practices. My initial practicing of this in a very serious way. Now, understand when I say that the very serious way, intentional way, was to learn to pray, um, to pray believing. That's what the Bible calls it. And to uh, understand uh, texts like the book of Mark, the 11th chapter and verses 23 and 24. And those verses make it very clear that if we believe, pray believing, that all things are possible. If you ask and believe, then you will actually bring to pass or see manifested those things that you have asked and believed God for. And so that was a period of time, a number of times that I have seen this come to pass, not only in my own life, but I've seen individuals actually come to the point where their life was restored. And one of my first pastors, as I uh, say to individuals, I saw one a lady who was lying on the bed and she had been instructed that she would definitely die at a particular period of time. And I was going in, her daughter, I did not know this lady, her daughter was a member of my church, she asked me to visit her mother, and I did. 
Uh, it was a two hour drive for me to get to where her mother was. And when I got there, I walked in the room. The lady had all kinds of tubes, it seemed, in every part of her body. And as I was there, I began to ask her about her relationship with Jesus of Christ. And after a long period of time, I recognized, of course, that she really could not answer me. I, it didn't take me long. I just kept going and trying to make sure that uh, the I got the answers that I thought that I needed. But at the period of time, I was just instructed by the Holy Spirit just to sit down, just to sit down. And I did, and I went to sleep. And when I woke up, I had prayer. And later, that lady uh, got out of the hospital in two days, I think it was. And when she went home, she spoke to her family, her children. I believe she had a family of all girls. And this this lady uh, that was a member of the church, she was, I guess, in the, the 40s, uh, something to that effect. And uh, she spoke to her and put her in charge of all of her things, I believe it was. And uh, the lady who had been in the hospital revealed, this mother revealed, that she had assets that she had never even spoken to her children about. She had a life that they did not know about. And then she said it all in order. It took her about 90 days. And at the end of 90 days, she was back in the hospital again. She had told her family about this wonderful, wonderful angelic being that had come to visit her at the hospital and that she wanted this person to actually do her funeral for her, her eulogy for her. And the person that she had spoken about was me. This person, didn't sell water senior. And I learned all about what I'm saying to you now after I did her eulogy. Because that last time when she went to the hospital, I was driving to get to that same hospital after being alerted that she was back there. When I got to the hospital and finally got in her room with her family and everything, she had been dead for four minutes. I did her eulogy at her request. And afterwards, I was really going through a period of time of great depression because I was trying to understand what had happened. Had she received Jesus Christ as her Savior, what had occurred? And it was at that time that an old elder, when I say old, I mean experience and age, his name was Elder Smith. He was one of my assistants, older than me, more experienced than me. He was my first pastor. They talked to me about what it meant to be the presence of God, the presence of Jesus Christ in a setting. They explained to me how God had worked in me, through me, and as me, as that presence at that moment, as the I am presence. Because I had felt it, because I had seen it, because I had been it, I understood it. There are individuals that came when we were in various places. One man, for one of the first people that came, was a person who was dying. He had some kind of cancer of the blood, I believe, if I remember correctly. That's the Owens. He came, the doctor had given him six months to live. He had only lived beyond that six months after we prayed for him. He, I believe, is still alive today in 2021. He first came in 1986. We've seen prayers answered for people, not only in regard to life and death situations, but in regard to people who want to see their dreams Realize people who wanted to have abundance, individuals who came and worked out their situations and their businesses went forward. So we've seen all of that and more, not only in their life, in my own life, as I said. And so we know that people are dreaming, people are hoping, people are believing. And we know there's what we call initially the ABCs of prayer. And what we now call our eight days, there's a process by which 
uh, formula, if you want to call it that. But it's more than just simply a formulaic path that one takes. It's a relationship that has structure with God, with spirit, with the divine. It's something that you not only see, it's something that you be. And that's what we're seeking. It's not something that's simply taught. There is a teaching and a training, but it's something that's caught. And some people may get it at one moment, and it may be seemingly very short to some, but some people it may take longer. But what we want to provide to individuals are the tools and the techniques and the trainings and the various readings that we've had. I've read a whole lot of books, a great number of articles and sermons and everything. And really, at a certain level, we don't guarantee anything other than providing you with the information about principles, policies, and practices. And when it comes to practices, they are very few to a certain degree, maybe seven to ten practices that you can learn. And you may know the names, but it's the consistency that you have with these practices. And when they click for you, they click for you and they work for you. We want to be community. That means to just simply have the encouragement, the affirmation, the love that's needed and necessary for you to keep believing when you don't even believe that you can make it. And so, as I said, we are working with Patreon to set these up. And we've aligned them with our different books and with the different teachings and the different articles and the affirmations and uh, principles. We call them principles, policies, and practices. Some things are just simply practices, just a set of do's, rituals, if you will, if you want to call it that. But practices, and that's important. They have some regularity in what you're doing. And then you go up to a higher level of understanding the policies. And then the highest level is to understand the principles. They're principles like love and beauty and truth and power and abundance. Those are principles of God. Principle was a place where you can take the name God and substitute. So you say God is love and God is life and God is truth. And you can substitute uh, the word truth for God and the word God for truth. That's a principle. And so we're working with all of those types of things when we work with individuals. We're providing them with tools. I've got uh, books that I've read, books that I've written. And again, We take people from where they are to where they want to be. Where they are to where they want to be. From where they are to where they want to be. Giving unconditional love. That's our desire. It doesn't mean that we always make it at that level, but that's our intent. And that's the value that we're working and growing in. Stretching ourselves by the grace of God. All of that building community. And as I said, I've been in places and then was not allowed to really remain there and to continue to practice where I was um, as a minister many times and all of that because I spoke out and I asked questions and sometimes you can't ask questions in certain places so I need to find another place And so I've arrived at a place where I recognize that it's valuable for me to have a community that is built on certain principles. And there are people that I have learned from. I will mention the Agape International Spiritual Center, uh, the leader there, facilitator there, the main spiritual leader there is an individual named Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith. I visited the Agape International Spiritual Center in 2011-2012 and um, hosted a seminar with Dr. Bickwith um, called Revolve Evolve um, and we have the recordings from that which we share with individuals um, and he is like a mentor I have his books and 
I recommend his book, sell his books to others, and study with individuals in those books. We've got a community right now studying his books. Uh, the answer is you, and then also spiritual liberation, and uh, the one on visiting. So a number of books uh, that go along with that. And then I've got another uh, spiritual teacher that's named Dr. Will Coleman. We have um, his uh, books as well as his teachings, which we have on various forms uh, that have done wonders for us. We share those with individuals. And then we have items from uh, sermons and books from various teachers that have really looked at these things that we're studying. Uh, we've got an individual who was instrumental in the establishment of what is called science of mind, uh, um, living the science of mind, a set of uh, compilations, uh, individual uh, by the name of Dr. Ernest Holmes, uh, his book, Science of Mind. We do studies in regard to that. And then also, um, again, helping individuals to understand uh, those, uh, his books, this thing called You, all of those we've read and we study with individuals to gain understandings of those. Um, and then um, walking them through, there's also the Unity School, and we study those uh, as well. Um, and then we also have other books beyond those initial books that we have and study with individuals, of course. Um, one by the name was Thomas Thorwood, who is, for me, uh, when it comes to principles and understanding those principles, um, he, he is par excellent. And then there's an individual, and they never got all of these, in the midst of also pulling together what it means to coach from an evidence-based standpoint, uh, understanding how that works. And so there is, like it was for a person named William James, the pulling together of an understanding of psychology and also of theology when he wrote in his book called The Variety of Religious Experiences. I believe the year for that was 1902. And he became the father of psychology in the West. Uh, so that's, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We're building community principles, policies, practices. Uh, we, we're just looking for individuals who want to co-create with us this, this wonderful, glorious community. Uh, we have things where we share with you how to meditate, um, how to visualize, uh, how to vision, and walk you through that process as well as giving you the principles that are behind these practices and what policies or beliefs go with this and how this all works together for your good. Uh, that's our intent with what we're doing. Uh, you can join us, pray for us whatever it may be, in regard to that. We want this to be something that serves you, something that serves you. Uh, you also see that we have John Maxwell um, videos and things of that nature that encourage you to have a coach because, as I said, I'm trained um, uh, to be. I've taken the uh, trainings at John Maxwell Training Group and then also Walden University um, I've done the PhD in industrial organizational psychology, uh, the teachings that go with uh, executive leadership development and uh, coaching, executive coaching. Uh, I've done all the studies other than writing of the actual degree. So a great deal of writing and reading and everything else that goes along with that. And of course, as I said, I've got a PhD from um, or a doctor of ministry, let me call it that, uh, from the University, uh, Howard University School of Divinity, and a Master's of Science of Telecommunications Management from the University uh, of Maryland Global Campus. All of those so that I can be prepared to be able to help you and you and you to actually transcend and move beyond, beyond your present situation, what we call your limiting principles, values, and beliefs, and to move and to become the person that you were destined to be from before the foundation of this earth. This is what I Will Restore is about. It is about really this aspect of the you that existed prior to uh, when God said, I 
I will restore. Spirit said, I will restore. That was spirit in you just as you had an existence before you were formed in the womb. This I will restore is a promise that God in you made and that you made in God to yourself that that divine image, that divine person, that divine purpose would be restored and fulfilled in you. I will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. You made that promise to yourself. You made that promise in God and as God, God within you. Now we are inviting you to keep the promise that you made. If you can see the light, you can be the light. Then you can live as the light and do the light and have as the light in this world. And rather than letting darkness over take us, we can be the light and do the light and have the light and let our light shine and brighten up this world. That's the community we're building. Join us now. If you email me, you can do that at Dr. D.R.D.L. Waters Sr. at D.R.D.L. Waters Sr. dot com. D.R.D.L. Waters, W-A-T-E-R-S Sr. S-R at D.R.D.L. Waters Sr. dot com. Bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.